Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we're looking at formulas for geometric figures, as you can see on the board here. Oftentimes we get a formula sheet that shows all sorts of formulas. What I'm going to do is explain some of the most, um, most popular or most common formulas in this recording. Quick what to expect. We're going to look at squares, finding the area and perimeter. Rectangles, also area and perimeter of a rectangle. The area of a triangle. The area of a parallelogram. The area and circumference of a circle. The volume and surface area of a cube. And one more thing that there's no room for, so I'll just put it right here in the middle. And that's the volume and surface area of a rectangular prism, also called a rectangular solid. Let's get into it. So our first figure is a square. The two main formulas that you'll get with a square are the area and perimeter. The area of a square is the side squared, and the perimeter is four times the side length. Let's look at this uh, two questions, one with area, one with perimeter. Find the area of a square with a side length of three centimeters. This picture up there in the upper right-hand corner. The area is equal to side squared. What that means is the side length or the side measurement of 3 centimeters goes into that formula in place of the letter S. And 3 squared means 3 times 3, which gives you 9. So that's the way you would use this formula for the area of a square. Perimeter um, of the same square is 4 times the again the measurement of the side so perimeter is the distance around the outside so 3 6 9 and 12 right four sides that are all 3 centimeters you're just multiplying four times the the measurement of the side so that'll give you 12 centimeters the rectangle two formulas that are often associated with the rectangle are area of a rectangle and perimeter of a rectangle the area is length times width, and the perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Let me show you how to use those. The area of this yellow rectangle in the upper um, corner here is length times width, so that's going to be 9 times 3. 9 times 3 is 27 square centimeters. That's the area of this rectangle. The perimeter using the perimeter formula, I'm going to put 9 into the perimeter for the length and 3 into the perimeter for the width. 2L means 2 times the length, so it's going to be 2 times the value of my length, and 2W means 2 times the width. So 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 3 is 6. I do multiplication first, then I add them together. My perimeter is 24 centimeters. Triangle. The main formula for triangle is the area of a triangle, and it's often written as half of the base times the height, or this way that I prefer, base times height over 2. So we'll do base times height and then divide by 2. So find the area when the base is 3 inches and the height is 5. Um, I also included two types, two pictures here of um, triangles. It does not matter. If, um, if it's a right triangle or like this one here, an acute triangle, what you need to do, the height is the perpendicular distance from the base up to one of the vertices. All right, so let's take a look at that. Um, my base is 3, my height is 5. I just plug them into that formula. Base times height means 3 times 5. It's going to be 15. And then after I multiply base times height, then I divide by 2. 15 divided by 2 is equal to 7.5. And because it's an area, it'll be square centimeters. Actually, it'll be square inches. Let's fix that. And like magic, it's the right thing. All right. Um, parallelogram. One formula for the par area of a parallelogram is base times height. Again, it is not the measurement of one of the sides of the parallelogram but the perpendicular distance from the base to the other base, actually this is called a second base, um, but the perpendicular distance between them is the height. So we're just going to multiply 
when we're given that the base is 7 and the height is 4, multiply 7 times 4 and you get 28 square meters. Circle. We're going to look at two different um, form or formulas for a circle. Let's start with the area of a circle. That's the space inside the circle or the colored orange part. And the equation is pi r squared. We're going to use an approximate number for pi of 3.14. So instead, you notice that my approximate equation, the area is approximately equal to 3.14 times the radius squared. Now, in this case, I've been given the radius of 4 feet. I've also given the diameter of 8 feet. If you're given the radius, you can just put that directly into the equation, um, just like this and solve. 4 squared is equal to 16. 3.14 times 16 gives us 50.24 square feet. The second formula we're using for a circle is the circumference. Circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Now in this case I did not give you the diameter. Notice over here diameter is a question mark. But I did give you two other formulas. A radius of a circle goes from the center to the outside. The diameter goes from the outside to the center and from the center back to the outside. The diameter is twice as much as the radius. So if you are given the radius and you need to find the diameter, you would just multiply times 2. So in this case the diameter is 8 because the radius is 4. Make sure that you are not putting in anything here other than the diameter. If you're given the radius, radius is R. Just make sure that the letters match and you'll be in good shape. So that now that I've calculated the diameter, I can now multiply 3.14 times my diameter and get my final answer. The circumference, or measurement around the outside of the circle, is 25.12 feet. A cube. There are two formulas that we often see with a cube. One is the volume of a cube, which is the physical space inside of it. And the other is the surface area. I like to think of this as painting the outside of it. Hopefully you wouldn't paint it this color. It's kind of like, whoa. Anyway, um, let's go ahead. Oh, with a cube, you're only given one measurement, and that's the side measurement. In this case, 13 meters. The side measurement is going to be the same on all sides because all faces are the same. They're squares. So let's look at my volume. The side is 13, so it's going to be 13 to the power of 3, which is 13 times 13 times 13. That gives you a huge volume, 2,197 cubic meters. That's the volume of this cube. Surface area is 6 times the side squared. In this case, 6 times 13 squared. Now, 13 squared is the area of one of the faces of this cube. So we find the area of one of the squares, and then we multiply it times 6 because there's 6 squares on the outside of this cube. All right, whoa. Back up one. 13 squared is 169. 6 times 169 gives us 1,014 1, um, 1, square meters. That is the surface area of this cube. The final solid that we are going to look at is a rectangular prism, often called a rectangular solid. And it looks like this. And there are three separate measurements. There's a length, a width, and a height for a rectangular solid. So the volume is actually quite easy. You just multiply the numbers. Length times width times height. 7 times 3 times 4. And you should get 84 cubic inches. That's the volume or, again, the space inside of this rectangular solid. The second thing that you might be asked to do with a rectangular prism or a rectangular solid is to find the surface area. Again, painting the outside of it. For that, you need to use a little bit more of a complicated equation. And you see the, the formula right here. Surface area is 2 times the length times the width, plus 2 times the length times the height, plus 2 times the height times the width. And 
whenever I'm given this type of formula that looks pretty complicated, I make sure to label each of these so that I put them in correctly into the the formula and it's going to look like this 2 times 7 times 3 plus 2 times 7 plus 4 plus 2 times 4 times 3. Notice everywhere I have a length I put in the value of 7. Length is there and length is also over here. Wherever I have a width I'm going to put in the value of 3. 3 here and 3 on the end. And wherever I have a height h I'm going to put in a value of 4. So it's 2 times 7 times 4. That's my height, and 2 times 4 times 3. And then I'm going to do my multiplication, seven, 2 times 7 times 3, 2 times 7 times 4, and 2 times 4 times 3. We do the multiplication before we do any addition, then we add up at the end. So our total surface area is 122 square inches. This is probably the most complicated formula um, in this video. So make sure to use the formulas. Now that you have them, you, you've seen how to use them, make sure to use the formulas um, for all of these figures, this solid, and of course, this one at the end. I hope that that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.